Hey everyone, uh, my name is Alejandro de la Vega and I'm a research scientist at the University of Texas at Austin and I'm gonna just give you a quick introduction to automated feature extraction with pliers. So first I'd just like to acknowledge that as of today there are dozens of openly available naturalistic data sets um, and this is really exciting for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, this is a huge success of open science uh, and thanks to the hard work of a lot of labs, um, these data sets are able to download and to analyze. Um, and the stimuli in these data sets is really diverse. So it ranges from movies to TV shows to narratives. Uh, and the stimuli here are potentially more dynamic and ecologically valid than those we use in traditional tasks. Um, but really the strength of these stimuli is also a complexity that introduces new challenges. Um, so ideally to understand how the brain is responding to these stimuli, we would want to have a timeline of the events that we care about, that we think are psychologically relevant. Um, and so one way to get these uh, timelines would be with manual annotation. So we can really have like an army of RAs, for example, watch the stimuli and annotate uh, things that we think are relevant. Um, and this has actually been done to some success, uh, but it's inherently time consuming and costly. And the issue is not really just time and cost, it goes beyond that, it's simply just not scalable. And if we really want to maximize the utility of these data sets, we need dozens, if not more, of psychologically relevant features. And it's important to remember that these naturalistic stimuli are a far cry from experimental designs. So we don't have experimental control, so we need to be worried about confounds and control for as many things as we possibly can, which can potentially also require dozens or more uh, regressors that we need to extract. Um, and really this becomes prohibitive across data sets. So if we really want to gain confidence in our findings and generalize those findings, we'd want to replicate our findings across data sets. And it's difficult enough to do this in one data set. So to do this across data sets is really hard. So how can we harness these naturalistic data sets without manual annotation? Uh, and you know, one way to do this is with machine learning. So as everybody with a smartphone knows, or just anybody living in today's world knows, these algorithms are everywhere. So for example, in the Google Photos app, if I search for cat, I will find pictures of cats that I've taken of recently. And so the way that Google is able to do this is they have these deep uh, neural nets that they've trained on millions of images that they have labeled from Google Images. And those trained networks can now readily identify uh, and label uh, the images that we provide. So it's able to take an image and predict the most likely object of that image. So what if we were able to apply this to the naturalistic data sets and automatically label our data sets? And in some ways this should be fairly easy, right? Because um, the machine learning researchers are really the ones that have already done the hard work. So they've developed and evaluated these algorithms. Uh, they pre-trained these uh, deep neural nets and often published the pre-trained networks. Um, and they publish libraries to interface with these networks and these other algorithms. Um, and so that is true, and we're actually in a relatively lucky to have that available, uh, but really the space of options is limitless, and what really becomes difficult is wrangling all these heterogeneous tools which might have different ways of using them, uh, different installation requirements, and so if you really want to extract a huge, you know, diverse set of features on a stimuli, that becomes a barrier. So to that end, uh, we've developed a library called Pliers, which is a Python library for feature extraction from stimuli. And the idea with Plier is really to provide a standardized and easy to use interface for a diverse set of extractors. So Pliers features a high level of abstraction, which lets you not have to worry so much about how each extractor is implemented. And instead you have an in uniform uh, interface or API uh, that is the same across all extractors. This uniform API is inspired by scikit-learn, so if you ever use scikit-learn, you should find pliers fairly easy to use, and even if you haven't, it's really straightforward. Um, and another um, highlight of pliers is that we've designed it to be extensible. So we've designed it from the ground up to be easy to add new extractors, and this is really important because in machine learning research, uh, things are moving really quickly, and every year there's going to be new extractors that do things um, that we didn't think were possible and are going to give us really interesting features uh, to analyze in our naturalistic data sets. So Pliers is designed so that new contributors can come and without necessarily having to understand the 
entire logic of how pliers works, if you just are able to focus on how to implement that specific extractor, it should be relatively easy to contribute. And so um, as of today, we already have uh, dozens of algorithms and services implemented. So these range from local algorithms, so something you might uh, like a pre-trained network in TensorFlow uh, to, you know, just local algorithms that are not deep learning based uh, to external services such as the Google Cloud Platform, uh, Clarify, which is an image recognition service or Rev AI, which is a speech to text service. So we have features that we can extract in all the domains. Uh, so for example, visual domain, we can extract faces, uh, their location, uh, different face parts, potentially even emotion. Uh, we can label scenes, for example, if there's a building present, if there's a vehicle present, if we're inside of a room or outside of a room. We can encode also low-level variables such as the brightness, the vibrance, sharpness, etc. And in the auditory domain, we can do similar things. So we can actually also label scenes from uh, audio, uh, and this is with the uh, audio set, which is a really exciting project from Google. Uh, we can also then encode low-level features such as loudness, frequency bands, and so on. Um, and in the speech domain, uh, thanks to advances in speech to text, uh, we can fairly accurately automatically transcribe uh, the speech in, in stimuli. Um, and this is something that is actually really exciting because every year we see huge improvements in, in these algorithms. And so once we have this force aligned transcript, so that means you know we actually have precise onset for every word, uh, we can then extract uh, a lot more features from that. So we could extract lexical norms such as frequency, uh, features such as length, uh, part of speech, uh, and then maybe even pass them through more advanced language processing models such as the family of BERT models which have uh, making a lot of noise in the last year. So without any further ado, uh, let's take a look at uh, stimuli that we run through this. So this uh, stimuli I'm about to show you is from the HCP dataset. It's a naturalistic task. Um, and what we've done here is we've highlighted uh, all of the faces that were automatically detected with a red bounding box. Uh, in the top right, you'll see image tags automatically uh, generated from the Clarify Image Recognition Service. Uh, you'll also see below that an automatically extracted transcript. And below that, you'll see uh, norms that were automatically extracted from that transcript. I was born in this town. I lived here all my life. And the house that I was born in still remains here in Bridgeville. When I moved here, everybody knew each other and it was like a big, huge family. You walk out and you see everybody. This is a good place for people to raise a family. As you drive through Bridgeville, you can feel that you're in Americana. All right, so as you saw, we were able to automatically extract a lot of uh, psychologically relevant features from that stimuli. And so then we can take those uh, ex uh, features that we've extracted and turn them into neural predictors. Uh, so here I'm showing an example of uh, 10 different predictors that we automatically extracted. And for example, in the first few columns, I'm showing automatically extracted scene labels. So for example, in the first column, or row rather, uh, there is a labeling of whether or not uh, there is a street present in the scene. Uh, and the second column is whether or not the scene is indoors or outdoors. Uh, we also have extracted features from the speech itself, such as the sentiment, the frequency, concreteness, um, we can also extract uh, audio properties, and here, for example, I'm showing the 60 to 250 hertz uh, audio frequency band. Uh, and finally, uh, the last row, we have uh, the presence of faces, so if there was a face present on the scene. So really the idea with pliers is to uh, allow you to take your natural six stimuli and very easily extract a timeline of features that might be psychologically relevant, and then in your favorite modeling software, you can uh, fit those features to brain data. So that is pretty much uh, the idea behind pliers. Um, and in this tutorial, you'll be learning how to use pliers. Uh, you'll be learning about the concepts behind pliers and how to uh, get your own features on your stimuli. 
Um, and first, I'd just like to have a quick note on installation. Uh, so pliers is designed for Python 3. Uh, so it's highly recommended that you use Python 3. Uh, but installation is really quite easy using pip. So using pip install pliers, you should be able to automatically get pliers. Um, but there are many optional dependencies. And so because pliers uh, relies on a really wide range of extractors, uh, some most of those extractors by default will not be installed with pliers. So if you try to use an extractor and uh, it's not available, pliers will hopefully throw an error that helps you uh, install the correct library. And optionally, you may also just install all the optional dependencies at once. So with the command at the bottom from that file, you can get it from the GitHub repository. You can automatically install everything so you know that uh, everything will work. Um, alternatively, you can also use the Docker file, which we have uh, to set up a Docker environment that has full support for all the extractors implemented in pliers. So with that said, uh, let me just thank the developers of pliers. So uh, this has been a work uh, from the Talier Coney's lab. And so there have been other contributors as well, like Quinn McNamara and Roberto Rocca, which have really uh, helped make pliers a mature program. And so if you have any questions or you want to learn more about pliers, head on over to the GitHub repository. Um, there's some pretty good documentation up there and, uh, feel free to ask any questions and if you find any bugs, file them as issues on the repository.